Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Early Parenting Podcast. You're tuning in to episode 32. Today, we're talking about what blocked milk ducts are, how you can detect one, and what causes them. So let's get stuck into today's episode. Welcome to the Early Parenting Podcast, where we help you navigate the somewhat tricky world of parenthood so you can love the crap out of being a mama. I'm your host, Jen Butler, and I'm an early parenting consultant and a mama of two busy, busy boys. Join me as I explore all things early parenting and deliver them to you in toddler-friendly, bite-sized lessons. Because let's be honest, your toddler is probably smothering pseudo cream on the wall as we speak. I'll be dropping my hottest tips on baby and toddler sleep, feeding, boobs, behavior, and so much more. Are you ready to feel confident in motherhood? Let's dive in. This episode is brought to you by my famous free clean sleeping guide. This guide has helped countless families in getting the foundations of baby and toddler sleep in place so you can help your babe get the sleep they need to thrive. You can download this guide for free from my website, www.jenniferbutler.com.au forward slash clean dash sleeping dash guide. So block ducts are one of the most common issues experienced by breastfeeding mums at one point or another. A tender lump in an otherwise healthy breastfeeding mother's breast is probably due to a blockage of one or more of the ducts in the breast. The milk backs up behind this blockage and that can lead to inflammation of the breast tissue. Mums may feel moderate to severe pain, especially when milk is letting down and tenderness over the affected site. The site may or may not look red and generally at the start of having a blocked duct, no systemic symptoms such as the fever, the body aches, the flu-like symptoms occur. Some of the most common causes for blocked ducts are 1. Missed feeding or long intervals between breastfeeds. So this could happen if, say, you're away from your baby for an extended period of time or perhaps if your baby drops a feed or if they're starting to sleep through the night. These are all examples of when suddenly those feeds might get missed or longer intervals start to happen and blockages can occur. There may be a period of time where you need to either wake your baby for a feed or express a little off for comfort just to manage the fullness of the breast and prevent these blockages. Another cause of blocked ducts is incomplete emptying of the breasts. So this could happen for a number of reasons, such as poor positioning and attachment, a rushed feed where your baby isn't able to drain the breast completely, switching to the next breast before the first has been finished. If mum is too tense for the letdown to continue happening throughout a feed, or perhaps if her fingers or clothing are put in pressure over certain ducts, which then occludes them and prevents the milk from flowing easily. Making sure that you're completely emptying a breast and preventing all of these occlusions and reasons for why the breast might not be emptying is going to be key to preventing blocked ducts. Another cause is an oversupply of milk. So when the milk is being produced at a greater rate than what baby's taking, this can lead to blockage and milk backup. Making sure not to overstimulate and over-empty the breast is going to be key here, but it may be required to use a little bit of expressing just to take some pressure off and prevent all of that milk from backing up. The next cause could be trauma or external pressure. So things like underwire bras or overly tight fitting bras can lead to blocked ducts, as well as clothing that is too restrictive. Other causes of external pressure are things like baby slings and carriers that are on too tightly, and letting your baby sleep on the breast can also lead to blockages if their head's putting pressure against those ducts. So there is a fine line between blocked ducts and mastitis, and in fact, it can be considered as a bit of a continuum. I'll talk more about when a blocked duct is transitioning into mastitis in another episode soon, but for now, I hope this helps you understand a little more about what may be causing them so you can try to prevent blocked ducts when you're breastfeeding. 
If you're having trouble with persistent block ducts, make sure you get in touch with me or another IBCLC to chat about what you can do to prevent recurrent block ducts or worse, mastitis, if that's what's happening for you. It can be prevented with the right education and plan. Awesome. I will chat to you next week, mamas. Can't wait to talk to you then. Thanks for listening to the episode, mama. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to share the episode with a friend, with your mother's group, or tag me at Jen Butler Early Parenting on Instagram. The more that know about this podcast, the more people I can help. If you're looking for support that is personalized for your babe and tailored to your family's needs, then make sure to head on over to my website, www.jenniferbutler.com.au and check out how we can work together so you can move through motherhood with confidence. Catch you in the next episode, mama.